All right, so we're going to replace the valve cover gasket since it was leaking. We're also going to check the valve lash at the same time. First thing we have to do is actually take the muffler off. Um, it is a 12 millimeter wrench. One of the only sizes that I did not get. So there is a flange between the, the exhaust manifold is a flange. There you go. And uh, the muffler attaches to that flange. There is a gasket between the muffler and the exhaust manifold. I purchased that gasket. Generally you can reuse them, but my luck normally has been that I bust the gasket when I take it off. So even though it's a, a, it's somewhat expensive for, for what it is, um, in some respects it's easier just to go ahead and order a new one and you don't have to worry about it. There are a total of six bolts to get this muffler off. There is four on the manifold and there are two up front that support the muffler on um, there's there's four on this flange right here and there's two up front I don't know if you can see my hand let me see here let me adjust the camera So you can, you can see where the wrench is at. And so these are actually going to be bolts. Actually probably work better if you came at it from the front in some respects. But I don't think I need to take the, I don't think I need to take the whole front assembly off just to do this. Normally I am a big proponent of taking things apart as you know in terms of of uh, body panels and everything. I'm normally a big fan of taking those apart. Okay. So I think that's all that holds our muffler on. So now we should be able to lift it off. One of the things. There we go. Just like that. Oh, hey. So this is why we're going to replace the exhaust manifold gasket. You can see that I split the gasket right in two, so some of the gasket, hopefully, better focuses. So you can see I split the gasket right in two, and um, so we had to scrape the gasket off and everything else, clamp the gasket surface before we put it back on there. Now, what we can do is we'll see if these are 12 millimeter. They are. We can take and pull. The valve cover bolts off. And I don't know if you can see it, but over here on this end is where, oops, I don't know if you can see it, but over here on this end right here is where it was leaking. Go over the other side of the machine. You can see that this, a simple set of ratcheting wrenches will really come in handy for this kind of stuff. Okay, here are both of my 
head bolts. There's only two bolts that hold the valve cover on. Now we're gonna should be able just to pick. Oh, forgot. I'll have to take this off because we've got the breather tube that goes down over the other side of the engine. So um, I'm not quite sure I had to take this off. Watch, I'll probably have to take the hood off or the, the grill assembly off. Um, but I'll, I'll go ahead and take this off and then we'll pull the valve cover off and we'll go from there. Okay, so the breather was actually harder to get off than I thought, uh, mostly because the breather tube itself has basically petrified over time. Sorry, it's so blurry. So, the breather tube itself is petrified over time. I'll set it down here. Well, you can see it better. Um, and so basically when I went to go pull it off, it just broke. Uh, so what I've done is I'll try to reuse this breather tube. Uh, it's very hard plastic. And so what I'll do is I'll heat it up with a heat gun. I'll get it off of, of here and I'll heat it up with a heat gun and I should be able to mold it back on there uh, just fine. Uh, I don't think it was gonna come off regardless of what I did. So um, valve cover's now off, and so now we can see the valves. Uh, now it's down to, uh, and I would agree that probably needed a new um, valve cover gasket. It looks like it's been pretty flattened over on this one side. Um, just over time. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get all this cleaned up and whatnot. And uh, then we, I'll get the, the new valve cover gasket out. And I need to go get my technical manual. And uh, with the technical manual, we'll go ahead and see what the valve lash needs to be and go from there. So uh, this should be a, a pretty fun process. Um, I know I've enjoyed it so far. And, uh, you know, you have to do this about, it should do it about every thousand hours. Um, let's see here, adjust engine valve clearance, which relates to, oh, it says, have the John Deere dealer perform this service, but you should do it at 550 hours, and you should do it again at a thousand hours, every thousand hours. So, um, based on the fact it doesn't look like this has ever been off, I would doubt the valve clearance has ever been adjusted. And so uh, probably good that I'm doing this.